Previously on Dig Drive DIY, you saw us excavate a large building pad big enough for a 60 foot by 120 foot pole barn, and then we expanded our driveway here at G&K Concepts. You see, G&K is where I work my day job. We're an independent agronomy consulting firm working with farmer clients to help them raise better crops. The owner of G&K is Greg, and in addition to being a consultant, he is also a farmer. He's been waiting to get this storage shed built for almost a year now, and in this video, it's finally going to happen. In less than 20 minutes, I'll show you the entire building project from the drilling of the first post hole to the parking of a tractor inside a completed machinery shed. I hope you'll stick around to check it out. Dig Drive DIY! Well, it has been about four months since we built the building pack back here for the new 60 by 120 foot pole barn that's going up here at G&K Concept. And so it begins, finally. So how long has it been since you uh, started this whole project, Greg? I committed to this thing in May of last year, and May of this year is in four days. So one year? Yeah, it might be an eight. And of course, as luck would have it, when they were boring one of the holes for the posts, they hit a tile, and it's a tile that we need to fix. So I'm gonna pause from what I'm doing here, go home and get the backhoe. We're gonna try to reroute that tile around the post. We gotta dig around that hole and reroute the tile. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of the tile then with my trench. Routed around the hole now. We dug up the tile on that end and found it. And of course we found it on this end. We went around the post. We're waiting on a couple fittings and we'll get that patched up. There's another tile we hit down there on those posts on the end, but we can fix that later. So we'll get those fittings back and get this bedded in stone. And then the concrete's going to be here any minute. Probably gonna set poles with this guy. Are you happy with the progress so far? Oh yeah, I'm just glad to see progress. It's only been about eight months in the waiting. Yeah, at least you bought your lumber a lot cheaper than it would have been right now. Way oh, cheaper. Yeah. I think my next in my next life, I'm gonna work at the planning department and the permitting mm -hmm. process. That was a little bit of a hang up. The permitting process for our county is, boy, they make it tough to wanna to build, but at least it's finally going now, so. It's already not big enough. Yeah, it's already too small. That's going to wrap it up for me today, but uh, tomorrow they're going to keep on working on the, the girts around the outside, setting trusses in two days. So this is going to go quick. Hopefully you stick around here for the rest of it. You don't want to leave, do you? Not really. <laughs> well, there's a lot of action here today. I can see that crane from my house, so it is truss day. They started well before I got here. They're making short work of this, but it's going to be fun to watch. 
They think they might even get most of the roof on today, which I find amazing. But... All right, let's check it out. Well, there you have it. That was the last truss. So they started about 7.30. It's not even 9.30 yet. So they put on 120 foot of trusses. I don't know how many that is for sure. I'll have to count them. Less than two hours. So we're gonna get started on the roof here very soon. I can't, these guys move fast. Things we'll do for the shot. I don't even like heights. Important question though. What's better, Milwaukee, DeWalt, or the Kia? Oh, of course. Milwaukee? Yeah, DeWalt. I see DeWalt, I see all three. He's breaking the trade in for free. So. Do they really? Yeah. Oh, nice. That's looking good, guys. We are back again today on Greg's building. They've got it all tinned around the outside. All the soffits done, all the eaves are done, all the metal work's done. We've got a few things to do before they can put the doors in. We got a tile to fix, which we're gonna do right now. And then we gotta dig some footers for the overhead garage doors. We've got Greg's Uncle Tom's mini excavator. It's a John Deere 35G. Now we gotta dig it up where it was cut by the post hole digger. And then we'll put in, put in a patch piece to get it, to get it back working again. The post hole auger hit the tile in all three of those posts, but it didn't get the tile down there. It was underneath the depth of the post hole. So we're gonna dig up the tile about right here and find it, and then hook onto it, go around these posts, and then reconnect back out there in the field where it's good. Okay, we got the tile right there, right where we thought it'd be. We're gonna hook on there, trench around here, and reconnect back there behind the laser. So, I'm running the ground today.
A good ground man is hard to replace. You just smooth up the bottom, there's a little bump right here. Hit the tile. Our trencher's full of water. You got fall though. It's running good. Fill this end in full of dirt and then kind of pack it in and then we'll trench back through it for the footer. We got to cut all that out for a footer. Now we're going to dig a footer in for this door. Just like this. Dig from this side to the other side and then that way they can fill it up with concrete and have a nice place for the overhead door to come down and land on. Okay, it's about halfway. I'm going to have to leave and just leave this stuff here and I'll check in tomorrow to see how it turned out. So, But the footer's all done. He had to finish in the moonlight last night. This truck's a six wheel drive, I'll go through about anything. It's awesome. So what do you think? You think this mixer is stuck now? He's in there pretty deep. It's down to the axle. Of course we got a little rain in between, but the footers look really good. They've actually cured up for a few days now. It's been, been a while since I've been back out here, but this is of course the north end. And we've still got a lot of fill to do in here. So we'll have some stone to bring in here. And we obviously need to bring stone up to that. He hopes to one day be able to put concrete in here. Here's the other end. He already put some stone in to bring it up so that he could get those trailers in here. And he's, he's brought the tractors in here too. Okay, they're going to get the doors installed. Said it'll take them two days. So this one's insulated, right? Insulated on the front. Non-insulated in the back. The back one gets a chain fall opener and the front gets an electric overhead opener. Yep. 
got the right tools and the right crew and they're making it look easy. They've been at it for less than two hours. That door's about done. Almost done with the doors. One opener, two trolleys. That's interesting. Huh. So that looks like it goes down and it's driven across there to that one. First time. Gives it perspective. See how fast it will fill up? Oh, I know. Looks good in here. Those panels are good. Well, Greg waited a long time for this building to get started, but once they were finally here, it didn't take them long. I would say all said total, they had probably a week in actual days where they were here framing, putting the roof on, putting the sides on, finishing the soffit and the trim. Everything's all buttoned up now. The next step is going to be to put stone on the inside and get it all leveled up. And then we also want to put probably Indiana number twos around the outside like I did with my brother's barn and like I did with my barn. But that's for another video. And I hope to have some help. So maybe stay tuned for that. I've, I've asked another friend of mine for some help on that stone on the inside. But that's for a video coming up. I want to thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope that you liked it. And if I'm lucky, I will see you in the next one. All right, take care. So we DIY a lot of stuff around here, including haircuts. And Kara's been cutting my hair since we first got together for like almost 20 years now. But this was a first time for this. Like I meant to. What happened? <laughs> Wait, what happened? Huh? <laughs> How short is it? Not that short. It's bald. Let me see. There's no guard. How bad is it? It's pretty bad. Huh? Oh my god. I just watched the video of it. It's gonna match the top of my head. So now I got a receding hairline in the front and the back. Kara had an emergency she had to run off to and then apparently the guard fell off of the clippers and now I've got this going on. Now what should I do? I say just buzz it all short. The girls say to leave it like it is with a stripe. I'm not gonna leave a stripe. Like Buzz it. No! Use your hibachi. <laughs> I think I would leave it. Because can you imagine in the front? It's, <laughs> it's going to be your beard and then both. <laughs> We're going to have to. No. We can't leave some big stripe I would, in my head. I would leave it a stripe. I think it looks better than being bald all of a sudden. No, I have to explain to everyone why I got a big stripe. I'm going to be on video on Tuesday. <laughs> I don't think it looks that bad, though. <laughs> Got a little uh, Forrest Gump uh, uh, sling blade. What do you think? Okay. It's a little high and tight now, but you know what the great thing about hair is? It grows back, except for this spot in the middle back here. But... <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week.